I am super, super excited and honored and thrilled to introduce our next panel, and in particular, our next moderator for our next uh, panel, uh, Corinne. Okay, so before, just I just want to say, Corinne is one of our community bio fellows. I first met Corinne last year at the Biodesign Challenge. Um, she is helping to also lead uh, youth doing amazing work in making, and um, her daughter, uh, Emily, and the GIY Bio Buddies are my total inspiration. I am their biggest fan. I'm still hopeful that they'll accept me for as an intern. Um, for their team. That is still my goal, my ask, my career aspiration. Um, they turned me down last year at the Bio Summit, but hopefully maybe this year they'll give me a shot. So um, Corinne, maybe if when Emily joins, um, you can ask her for me. But um, everybody, please join me in welcoming Corinne Takara. I'm so inspired by Corinne and all of the work that she's doing. She is, she's our community bio fellow and also has been an organizer extraordinaire, um, has taken on so much responsibility and is just such a tremendous leader. So everybody, can you all give some love, some snaps, some claps, some emojis for Corinne Takara? Corinne. Thank you so much, David. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, uh, welcome everybody to the Starting and Sustaining Community Labs panel. Uh, the question that we are centered on here today is one that we're all very focused on in this challenging time of COVID-19, wherever we are around the globe. We will continue this discussion in a second longer interactive panel later in the day in the Power of Community track. As David mentioned, my name is Corinne Takara. I'm a bio artist and STEAM educator who works with the bio lab Shinampan Salinas. And, um, oh, and I'm just being reminded that we want to make sure that in the, um, in the chat here, in the Zoom, please change your name so that we know um, your pronoun preference um, as well as um, your, your country and affiliation. Um, and I was saying I, I work in California, in the United States. I'm co-founder of BioJam, a team biodesign camp in Stanford Bioengineering Department. It is such an honor to be here to facilitate this important conversation with our four panelists who are inspiring and innovative leaders of the community lab from community labs from around the world. So joining us today are uh, Bhavna Pandya of BioRiddle, representing the region of Asia, H Harry Akwigo of Hive BioLab, representing the region of Africa, Thelma Gonzalez of All Biotech in Mexico City, representing Latin America, and Werezak Sudarenchai of Freak Labs in Thailand, also representing Asia. And we will have um, European and North American representatives in the afternoon um, panel discussion. So now I'm gonna be asking each panelist the same two-part question. The first part is to more fully introduce yourselves and your organization, and then to share your thoughts on starting and sustaining community labs. And as you think about this question, also be thinking about uh, what is community to each of your organizations and um, also what does sustainability look like for finances, lab community, your personal sustainability in these times. And are there a few core, common core ingredients in each of our BioLab origin, origin stories? Um, so just a few things to think about too. Uh, what is unique to your space and what, what is universal. So uh, Bhavna, I would really like to start with you and um, you're gonna have a few minutes to share. So first about yourself and your organization and your thoughts on starting and sustaining community bio labs. If you don't mind unmuting oh, yourself. Sure, thank, thank, you so, thank you so much, Corinne. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful introduction. Uh, so I'd like to introduce myself. I'm uh, Bhavna Pandya, I'm leading uh, India uh, so the, the very first uh, community bio lab in India when uh, back in 2015 and uh, uh, so we also have this biotech business incubator which uh, we just started uh, like a year or uh, two years back and uh, we also raised uh, some grants so we we started with uh, building community first uh, when we had nothing uh, with us we were just 8000 square feet space uh, but nothing in it so we started building community first and then we realized that, uh, you know, we can go ahead and make uh, DIY tools so that the community keep uh, working on it. And then uh, after a after few uh, projects, uh, we started with 33 members initially, so which is a very good number for us and it was very encouraging that this is uh, something which is needed here. So I just wanted to uh, validate it first that uh, whether we really need it uh, or not. So I got in touch with uh, Tito from BioCurious Lab. So I went onto the Google uh, groups and I found uh, 
Tito there. So he really helped me understand the concept of it and what are the challenges that I might face uh, during during this journey. So this really helped me a lot. And then uh, after uh, after starting this and announcing this community in lab here, we started with uh, 33 members and we uh, we had around 18 projects in the in the beginning itself without having any any equipment or any uh, any facility with us. So we started with very DIY projects and then slowly uh, we moved on to uh, becoming a project, uh, becoming a product. So we had around nine products in the, in the beginning. So uh, that's how we real, where we realized that, you know, we may not be able to sustain this lab uh, with just community bio lab or with just community activity. So we may need to, you know, uh, grab some more opportunities so that we can keep sustaining this and as well as we can also support this product. So that's how we, uh, approached uh, government of india uh, so we asked uh, you know we asked them we presented about about our work what we have done till now then we uh, went on to them and then uh, they really appreciated our work and uh, they helped us build this entire facility so we raised around half million dollars from the government to build a very uh, full fledged facility with us so here we have uh, 8000 square feet uh, with all the uh, all the facility uh, all the uh, cell culture labs, all the advanced facility that you might want to, you know, get uh, get into and use it. So uh, we still call ourselves as community or DIY lab because we don't want that uh, concept to go away. Because uh, people should really think uh, and work on their on their own project, and they should come up with that uh, idea. So we we are still a community bio lab, and we really uh, keep working on it to develop the community around us so that we, they know us, and they also work on us uh, innovative solutions. So I think that's it from my side. Thank you, Bhavna. And in terms of, I, I just want to say I also know Tito, so it was, it was really interesting and wonderful to hear that he he was uh, someone that you were able to communicate with at, um, yeah, uh, yeah BioCurious. And um, just before I move on to Harry, I just want, you have a few more minutes, so I just wanted to ask you too, do you have any tips for other biolabs are just starting because it sounds like you you did reach out internationally. So what are your tips on that when people are percolating ideas in this difficult time to start? Um, what are your suggestions? Yeah, uh, uh, is the question for me? Yeah, I just, I just want to touch on that real quick because um, yeah, yeah, I thought that yeah, was interesting. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, whenever whoever wants to start a lab, they should just Google Google and find out what exactly this concept is. Because when I started, I really I was really new to this con concept. I didn't know this didn't know this DIY bio thing. You no, know, I didn't know this uh, concept that exists uh, around the world. So I just Googled it. I found this Google group, and then uh, from the experience, people I got to know uh, challenges. Uh, you know, before I started my own lab. So that's real. It's really good to understand what exactly you're getting into, and then what are the challenges that you might face in future. So you're well, very well prepared. So I would uh, recommend everyone to, uh, you know, go and find out what others are doing. Take uh, inspiration from them. Uh, take some suggestions so that you don't repeat the same mistake. So that's what I, I would like to suggest everyone. Oh, now that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. And I think this touches upon what David said about being brave. Um, it's brave to reach out on Google to people you do not know. And um, so yeah. that's really wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Harry, um, we would be honored if you share your story, introduce yourself and your organization, and then also share your thoughts on starting and sustaining labs in this time. All right, thank you very much. Uh, and my, my name is Harry Akligo, and um, I'm currently based in Kumasi, Ghana. Uh, I would say that um, I will, I'm the one of the first to actually start a, a community biotechnology initiative here in Ghana, uh, and uh, one of uh, one of two in Africa uh, that is trying to promote community biotechnology initiative uh, across the African country, aside some uh, initiatives and some community labs in Cameroon. So we are a lab called the High Bio Lab, and what we basically are focused in is how do we uh, utilize biotechnology to solving the numerous community problems that we have, and equally bridging the educational deficit gap that young people in Ghana face. So that was one of the motivating 
uh, things that actually got us into what we are doing uh, with the High Bio Lab today, trying to promote more contemporary skills to young people who finish, however, do not have what it takes to start their own uh, or get an employment. So we provide this uh, open space and facility, give them the trainings that they need so that they're able to launch their bio-innovative ideas. Because one of the challenges that we realize is that young people in Ghana go to school, read uh, amazing programs in the life sciences, and are, however, are faced with the challenge of unemployment whenever they finish. So then how do we help people that have these beautiful uh, ideas in using biology to to solve problems of uh, water contamination because one of the challenges we have in Ghana is uh, what we call Ghana say, right? So we believe that we can use biology to turn these things around and people have innovative ideas in that regard. So we want to create that space, provide a, that community a, a platform where there are resources available for them to uh, provide innovative solutions in this regard. So that is one of the motivating things that actually got us into what we are doing today. And uh, I would say that it began as an idea, as an individual, it began as an idea wanting to change my community one step at a time using biology. Uh, but because um, obviously when you start off an initiative like this, you need to identify a community. So I would say just to touch on the point of how uh, you would want to start and sustain such an initiative, you first off have to have an idea what you want to do because every, uh, outstanding um, solution that we see in the world today came off as an idea and it obviously was born by an individual but it didn't uh, become uh, one that is solving global problems, one that is transcending boundaries by just an individual. They first have to find themselves in a community Right. And that was one of the things that actually got me started. There, I, there were a number of people that we spoke to um, that believed in the idea of using biology as a catalyst for development here in Ghana and in Africa. So some of the amazing communities that we found my, I found myself in were obviously the Global Community Bio Summit and then one that we are championing in Africa called the Africa, uh, Africa OSH. Uh, was one of the amazing communities that we are using to democratize the uh, open science and then biotechnology, the, the whole do-it-yourself culture. So these were some of the things that we, we uh, I would say that you need to align yourself with yourself with before you, you can say that, okay, you are going to start a, a community bio lab and even talk of sustaining it because all these things are very important, especially in times like this, where you need a whole community to support this movement. Harry, thank you so much. I really appreciate, I think we all appreciate you elevating the idea of community and idea. So it's not about the tools, right? Um, so thank you for also mentioning um, the, this community here. This is how so many of us find our, our people. And, um, and I, I wanna highlight again that David had mentioned earlier that you were the very first applicant to this to the, the whole summit. So I just think it's so amazing to hear that and to, to, to see you here presenting. Thank you so much. Um, and so now I'd like to go to Thelma Gonzalez of All Biotech in uh, Mexico City representing Latin America. And Thelma, um, really excited to have you here. I, I, I have such fond memories of you last year um, in your giraffe costume. <laughs> so. <I love. laughs> So if you don't mind to share a little bit more about yourself and your organization, and then also answer that same question we're asking everyone about uh, starting and sustaining uh, community labs. So thank you, Thelma. Yay, hello everyone. I'm just um, introducing myself. I'm Thelma Gonzalez. I'm from Mexico City. I'm excited to be here. This is my third bio summit. I'm actually wearing the t-shirt. So hello everyone. I hope you're as excited as me. And well, okay. About uh, all biotech, I have been working with this organization, and it's about uh, gathering young leaders in Latin America. As I am from Mexico City, I have a Latin American view of the world. So um, we empower entrepreneurs, and we do it through biotechnology. So uh, I've been part of a different labs in academia, and then it started like the urge to create new kind of labs, no 
to, to have new projects, okay? So uh, normally, uh, when you want to start a community lab in Latin America, we start from basics, from maybe old lab equipment that was there in academia labs, and they give it to you or you can buy it for a low price. You also start like with um, cheaper versions of, of equipment that you have in your lab so you can bring it to another place to create your own experiments. And also DIY versions of your equipment, even 3D printed or you create that out of a box of plastic and you somehow make it work to, to make it useful for research. So it's awesome. I also went to funding issues. You know, it's not it's not common in Latin America to say, okay, I want to do my own science. Please help me with money or with equipment or with something. So you have to really go through storytelling and explaining people why science is important and why and how you can change the world with that. So it's amazing to to know that there are a lot of people interested, like among our community, students, researchers. Uh, people that maybe didn't even study science, but they are coming together uh, to make uh, awesome biomaterials or bio art or from many other fields of expertise. And that is awesome. And the most important part, I think, of a community lab is collaboration, finding awesome people. We are all in this together. We, it's all about creating new projects and a new view of how we can create science and how we are responsible of human knowledge like human knowledge create uh, humans create human knowledge so really awesome to to know this and uh, finally obviously covid uh, has brought some changes uh, in interactions in work and most importantly in emotions like feeling fine is the first step to to do awesome science and to do awesome projects so yeah that's pretty much it we have changed it over business model to to um, be in this COVID uh, season, uh, hopefully not so long. But yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm glad to be here and representing Latin America. Thank you so much, Thelma. And thank you for highlighting the importance of storytelling. That was, that was really wonderful, um, as well as emotion. This is a hard time. Yeah. Um, but like the power of storytelling and uh, DIY tools. So my ideas are percolating as well as everyone else who is listening. So thank you so much. Um, and next, our next panelist that is going to share with us uh, is Werzak. Uh, and um, he's coming in from Freak Lab in Thailand, Asia. Really excited to hear from you. Um, yes, wonderful. So if you don't mind just introducing yourself a little bit, your organization, and address that same question everyone else is speaking to, starting and sustaining community labs. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Corey. Hi, everyone. I'm Ria Saka. Actually, I'm a university professor from Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, I read a community that the so-called uh, Freak Lab. Uh, sounds a strange name. Freak Lab actually is a, 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 an across a disciplinary uh, or, or sometimes an anti-disciplinary research cluster. Uh, uh, we uh, it found by a group of uh, Thailand junior science Thailand, uh, project students with uh, their mentors in in two thousand seventeen in Sai King Mukut University of Technology Chambri in Bangkok, and later with uh, other network organizations. Uh, in, in, in Thailand or in the US or in Japan. Freak Lab uh, began as the uh, bio, digital bio arts project. Actually, uh, myself, I, I, I have my own uh, formal academic uh, laboratories, uh -huh, which are doing something uh, by sensor, sensor stuff, but somehow we are, I really want to open more to the, to become the uh, uh, general open oh it's so unfortunate i don't know if it's everyone else's but for me my screen is is frozen um oh here he comes back hopefully 
And again, we're reaching from all around the world with different internet access. Um, okay, so I see in the chat that it was also frozen for, for you all. Um, so hopefully he'll be able to join us again. But you're back. Yes, wonderful. Yeah, well, 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 so, so, very sorry. Uh, no worries. I, I, th I, thought, I thought everybody hear me. Hello? Can, can you hear me? We can hear you now. So glad. Continue, please. Thank you. Right. Uh, uh, free clap is uh, uh, now is a uh, converse uh, people, uh, uh, different kind of the discipline from arts, culture, science, and technology and engineering uh, for, for exploring the symbiotic relationship between uh, human and the emerging technologies. For example, uh, uh, CRISPR Cas. Uh -huh. And by using a variety of these methods and, and media to, to really imagine the future possibilities. Uh -huh. and, 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 and in our sense, uh -huh, for, for, the, uh, uh, the uh, for the maintenance, maintenance uh -huh, for the, 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 the community itself is uh, certainly a key importance. The community of Fig Labs, uh -huh, we uh, consist of the uh, open-minded uh, fellows from, from uh, different uh, disciplines, different uh, arts, uh, architectures, uh, theaters, directors, theater directors, uh, economists, uh -huh, and so on, so forth. And uh, yeah, and different age, we have the, uh, 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 kids from uh, 15 to the old 60 uh -huh. and uh, uh, different genders and uh, expertise that uh, can work together on the cutting edge project with all without a lab bench. Uh -huh. And uh, we, are, we are a community that works and, and, and communicate uh, through several means from social medias, cafe, pubs, dining, or may end up in the laboratories. It is really upon a, a certain project eventually. Uh -huh. We always start uh, or, or ignite ideas over internet. A project uh, will then be uh, naturally orchestrated by different functions, also including of uh, funding resources and all logistics. Yeah, some, some fellows, May, may go on after a, a, accomplishment, but the project champion will still play along with, with the enthusiasm for the next uh, ideas. We, we, we can keep going the community with the new fe fellows. I, I earlier mentioned about the, 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 uh, the, the, the group of students, particularly from the uh, 20 years old uh, JS uh, Junior Science Challenge Project Lamnas. The stakeholder of the community knows that uh, FIGLAB is, is a platform for transforming the futuristic ideas into the tangible prototypes with, with aim, aiming to have the positive impact on, on societies in terms of knowledge, ethics, and, and surely uh, economy is quite uh, important for us as well for, 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 for keep uh, uh, resources. I would say to sustain the community lab, we, we have to, to be uh, openness, consider public uh, perception, should have a sense of belongings, resilience, and we, we construct uh, our own unique culture, sort of uh, always doing things freaking cool. <laughs> that, that, that's just uh, from, from my, my, my part. Yep. Right. <laughs> Thank you. I, I love that freaking cool part. So everyone, that's one of our takeaways. It's got to be freaking cool. Right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for your insights. And I am just so amazed to hear how you have a community lab that has artists and architects and economists. So this is something yeah, else sure. to think about. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. You're um, welcome. Yeah, so um, and wrap up here, just want to highlight a few things and also some of few things I saw in the chat. Um, so where Zach, I heard you really talking about creating a platform that's open and be very aware of perception from the outside. I think that's really 
important as well. And just amazing diversity of age, uh, interests of the people that you are welcoming in. And you also said something about imagining future possibilities um, and having this platform to imagine. And I think that ties into what Thelma was saying about storytelling. So as we build our labs, we need to be thinking about what is our story? What is our community? And uh, as Harry mentioned, what's the idea? What are you focusing on? And then as um, Bhavna had said about when she was researching this, be brave and really reach out to the community. And I, I would just like to take this opportunity to highlight that this, again, that this is a community here that we're all part of right now. And welcome to those of you who are here for the first time. And if you wanna connect more, if you wanna reach out more to a global world, really consider joining the, um, applying for the uh, BioFellows program next year. The applications come out in the summer. And I, I, yeah, and I believe everyone here, um, are, not everyone on our panel speakers, but many are uh, alumni. So um, are in the process right now. So both Thelma and I are bio fellows for this year and Harry was in the, uh, the, the first bio fellow cohort last year. And it's a really wonderful journey. So, so much of what you're hearing here about the value of storytelling and building community and focusing on the ideas, uh, Oh, great, I'm seeing the chat, someone's saying I'd love to. Uh, really keep an eye out for, for this op wonderful opportunity to connect more globally. I did see a few questions in the chat. We have a few minutes here. Um, and so I'm just gonna throw this out. And I'm sorry I didn't catch the name of the person who put this in, but someone asked, can you start a bio lab as an undergraduate? Um, and then there was one other one. Oh, I have to see. I'm so sorry, I don't see it on here now. But um, anyway, um, address the idea of like, who could start a bio lab? Is there a certain age? Someone's asking about undergraduate. Oh, and, and um, also Thelma, you had mentioned something about restrictions on um, kind of activities that you can do in labs. So you can choose either one of those. And um, I know we only got two minutes here. Maybe just like, uh, if any one of the panelists has a thought on how old can you be an undergrad? Can you, when can you start a lab? Totally. Yeah, uh, let's start by the mind setting, saying that a lab is wherever you can see an experiment. And so our world is our lab. So you just have to have a desk, a little room, and then create your projects. And then we, people will follow and you will see resources will come. So yeah, if you're an undergrad and you have a project, an idea, just say to your friends, say to your teachers and you will find a way. But yeah, totally start as soon as possible because it's awesome to have this creativity working. Thank you so much. And um, I see another comment here. I think we'll, oh, it's David. I was like, who's put this great thing in there? Our world is our lab. I love that. And I think that's a really great thought to end on. Uh, Thelma, thank you for sharing your last thoughts. And I really hope that we see you all continue this conversation in the afternoon. We're going to have a longer interactive panel um, with more speakers because this is such an important topic. Like how do we sustain in this really difficult time uh, of COVID? And what are the opportunities as well to connect internationally? Um, so our, the world is our lab and uh, the world is our community. So uh, thank you all so very much for joining us and uh, just really excited for today and the next few days. So thank you, really grateful. Can we all give some applause and some snaps and some love to Corinne and Harry and Bhavna and Thelma and Dr. Rorsak? Thank you all so, so much.